Hello students. Today we're still in chapter 5. We learned how to solve these simultaneous move games with continuous strategies back in the previous episode. Now we're going to look at an economic application. That is the Corneau game. In our example, we'll have two firms. The same model can scale up to have three or more firms, so don't worry about that simplification. So we'll have firm one, and they make quantity Q1. Firm two makes quantity Q2. The demand curve in this market is going to be price equals 60 minus Q, but Q is Q1 plus Q2. So by C of Q1, I mean cost of producing Q1. So you saw something like C of 5 equals 12. What that means is that it costs $12 to make 5 units. So C of Q1 is 20 Q1. C of Q2 is 20 Q2. So the way the Cournot game works is that the price that both firms charge will be the same. That's what we turn by demand here, the firms pick their Q's simultaneously. And Q is continuous. So we know that profit is going to be revenue minus costs. Revenue is always price times quantity. Firm makes Q1 units, so their quantity is Q1. So price comes from the demand curve here. We said demand was 60 minus Q1 plus Q2. So that's price times quantity for firm one. Then we subtract off cost of Q1, and that is 20 Q1. So I think it'll be a little bit easier if we expand that. So we get 60Q1 minus Q1 squared minus Q2Q1 minus 20Q1. So just distribute this Q1 through here. I can now simplify by combining these two terms here that both have a 
q1 in them. So that's going to be 40q1 minus q1 squared minus q2 times q1. And I'll write that as pi1. So firm one's profit or firm one's payoff. Their payoff is their profit, so I guess both terms work. We could do the same thing for firm two. So their profit is also revenue minus costs. Now they're producing Q2 instead of Q1, so the revenue is price times Q2. Costs are cost of making Q2. Price is still given by a demand curve there. So price times Q2 minus cost of Q2, we say cost of Q2 was 20Q2. Same procedure, I'll just distribute this Q2 through everyone in that parentheses. So 60Q2 minus Q1Q2 minus Q2 squared minus 20Q2. Combine these guys. Pi2 is 40Q2 minus Q1, Q2, minus Q2 squared. All right, so I've written down the payoff functions. So to get some practice, go ahead and try to work out what is Q1 and Q2 in the Nash equilibrium. Follow the same procedure we had in the previous video. So Pause here, solve that problem, and when you're ready, press play, and you'll see if you're right. All right, I assume you've given that some thought. So let's solve it. I'll just rewrite pi 1 down here for convenience. So you take partial derivatives and set them equal to zero to maximize the payoffs. So partial derivative of pi one with respect to q one, we get 40 for this first term. The derivative of q one squared is gonna be two q one derivative of q2 times q1 with respect to q1 is going to be q2. So again, with partial derivatives, you're going to treat all variables other than q1 as if they are constants. So we see a q2 times a q1, that q2 is treated as if it were a constant. So we had something like y equals, say, um, 7q1 dy dq1 is going to be just 7. 7 is a constant, so that's what happens. You have a constant times q1. Likewise, over here, you treat q2 as if it were a constant. We treat it the same way we treat the 7 back there. So the constant sticks around and q1 goes away. 
as it sticks around, Q1 goes away. That's how partial derivatives work. Let's do the same thing for firm two. So their path is over here, 40Q2 minus that stuff. So we take the partial derivative with respect to Q2. That gives us 40 for this first term minus Q1. So you're treating Q1 like a constant now. So similar to this example back here, derivative of, two, of Q2 squared is going to be 2q2. We set that equal to zero to maximize the payoff. All right, two equations, two unknowns. Hopefully this will work out. So I'll just put the q2 on the other side. 40 minus 2q1 equals q2. And then I can plug that in down over there. So I have 40 minus Q1 minus 2 times Q2, but Q2 is that. That equals 0. Let's expand. And now we will combine some like terms. So the Q1s go together. The constants also go together. Minus 40 plus 3Q1 equals 0. 40 goes over there. So Q1 is going to be 40 over 3. Um, so the game is symmetric, so by symmetry Q2, it better also be 40 over 3. If you don't believe me, you can go and plug into our equation back here, and that's what you'll get. Now, the game was not symmetric. I really want to go take this number and plug it back in to find Q2. But in this special case, I have a shortcut. So that's our Nash equilibrium. Let's just write it out formally. So to develop our economic intuition further, we can also compare this oligopoly outcome with just two firms, this duopoly, to other scenarios. We can compare it to perfect competition and also compare it to the monopoly outcome. So let's talk about let's talk about price first. So where is price going to be highest? In the Cournot model, in perfect competition, or in monopoly? Go ahead and pause the video here and think about that. When you're ready, press play. So the monopoly price should be the biggest. So when there's no competition, the firm can just raise the price more. Prices will be lowest when there is the most competition. Competition drives prices down. So we expect the monopoly price to be bigger than the Cournot price. 
we also expect the Corno price to be higher than the perfect competition price. Now let's do the same thing for quantity. So under which structure will quantity be highest? Monopoly, Carnot, perfect competition. Where is the second highest and where is the lowest? Go ahead and pause the video here. Think about that. When you're ready, press play. So you get the biggest quantity from perfect competition. And you should get Corneau in the middle. And a monopoly should have the lowest quantity. So in order to drive up the price, what the monopolist does is they restrict Q, they limit supply. In the Corneau model, there's a little bit more competition, so price will be lower, which will mean there'll be a higher quantity. Under perfect competition, you have lots of firms flooding the market with supply, so you have the lowest price, so it's going to give you the biggest quantity. So let's just verify our intuition by working through each of these cases. So uh, I found the Corneau quantity, which is enough to find the Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is about strategies, and the strategy involves Q. Let's just find the Corneau price as well so we can make these comparisons. So we set our demand curve was back over here, P equals 60 minus Q. So let's just plug in our Q equals 40 over 3 for each. So this will be, um, I believe it works at 200 over, 100 over 3. So there's the Corno price. Um, my video is probably going to run out of memory very soon, so let's do the monopoly and perfect competition outcomes in the next episode.